Hello everyone. If you're anything like me, you love WordPress. However, the recent direction that WordPress has been going in, it doesn't really fit with how I use WordPress in my client projects. What I mean is I hand code sites for my clients. I write my own HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and custom PHP to create a bespoke solution for each client. And then WordPress, it just lets my clients update and manage the content without them having to send me an email request to update or change something. In other words, there's a great separation of concerns. I'm the web designer and web developer. You know, I write the bespoke code and then my client literally only worries about CRUD operations on plain text content and fields and, you know, maybe has to upload a photo here and there. Right, so the client is not worried at all about design or style guides or branding colors or anything. Now, until recently, WordPress was great for this approach of separate concerns. But with the recent addition of not only the block editor, but block themes and full site editing, WordPress has started to feel less like a CMS and more like baby's first page builder design tool. I'm not a big fan of this direction, but I still love WordPress. So in this video, I wanna share with you a boilerplate theme that I've created that combines the power of full site editing and composition and you know a block-based approach. It combines that with the flexible and dynamic and developer-friendly power of server-side rendering in PHP. In other words, in my opinion, this gives us the best of both worlds. It lets us have our cake and eat it too. Okay, so in this video, you and I are not going to code anything together line by line. Instead, I just wanna give you a tour of this new theme I've been working on, and I wanna encourage you to check it out, download it, give it a try for yourself. So, on my GitHub repo here, it's called Brad's Boilerplate WordPress. Uh, I've made previous videos about these different folders with themes and plugins, but the one that we're gonna look at today is this one. It's called Brad's FSE Hybrid Theme, or you know, Brad's Full Site Editing Hybrid Theme. So I encourage you to clone this repo, pull it down, whatever, or just click code here and download the zip file. But essentially, in those files from GitHub, uh, if you just go in and grab this folder, it's called Brad's FSE Hybrid Theme. In your local WordPress installation, you know the drill, just go into WP Content, go into Themes, just plop this right in there. Cool. So let's go activate it. Let me give you a tour of what I've been working on in this theme. So we'll go into Appearance. Here it is, Brad's FSE Hybrid. Just go ahead and activate it. Now let's take a look. Okay, so let me use this link. Let's check out the home page. Okay, so just your typical website, right? It's got a header. This is the home page. It's got a slideshow, and then it's got a footer. I won't bore you with the rest of the site for now. Let's get into the interactive bit. So, for example, let's imagine that we're the client of this website. So we're not the designer, we're not the developer, we're just the owner of the site, the client. And imagine we want to edit uh, some of this homepage banner text. So check this out. We would just go into the appearance screen and click customize on the theme. And then you could click on templates and click on front page, um, but it's gonna show you the front page by default here. So if you just click you know, on that area or anywhere over on this right hand side, close that out. So imagine if instead of welcome, I wanted it to say like, you know, welcome with three exclamations. And then, um, so with this selected, you can see I can choose between large, medium, and small. Now I wanna let you know, yes, this looks like the built-in, you know, WordPress context menu, and it is, but I specifically added these options of large, medium, and small. And why this is interesting is this is absolutely not using the WordPress styling system. I don't personally have anything against the WordPress styling system. It just doesn't fit with my workflow. In other words, I want to have fine grain control. Like if my client clicks large or medium or small, I want to be con in control of the HTML, the markup. Maybe I want to apply my own Tailwind classes or my own SAS classes or whatever, but I want to be in control of the markup that results from my clients making decisions. Right, or let's take this button for example. My client can choose between large, medium, or small, and they can only choose from the color of, you know, blue, light orange, or dark orange. I don't want my client to have very many design choices. They need to fit within the framework. You know, they've paid me good money to be a web designer and web developer. They shouldn't be having to make design decisions. They should just be making content decisions. Anyways, let me give you a better example because you might be seeing this and going, Brad, this is not revolutionary. This is just typical stuff. But let me explain why I have such a disdain for the way that blocks typically work in WordPress. So let's imagine I have a website for a client and I build them a slideshow area, right? 
So down here. Now imagine our client has 500 different landing pages and they want to use a they want to have a slideshow like on 500 different pages. The way that blocks typically work is in the admin in the Gutenberg block editor, it's going to save a static copy of the resulting HTML for that component, for that block. Now imagine if you used this blocker component on 500 different pages, and then I, as the web developer, what if I wanted to leave, you know, all of the text content in place that the client has typed in, leave all of their, you know, the URLs that they've chosen for the buttons and leave the background photos that they've chosen for the slides. But what if I, as the developer, want to change the HTML markup, like add a different tailwind class or add you know, like a different utility div or, you know, change the heading level three to a heading level two for, you know, ac accessibility reasons. What if I wanted to make one of those changes and I needed to make it across all 500 posts and pages that use this block? Well, if you're using blocks in the traditional way or sort of the default standard way, that's impossible. However, with my theme, I've incorporated PHP or server-side rendering. So you could change the HTML in just one template and it actually would update all 500 blog posts and pages that use it. Let me give you a tour of how I've set this up. So for example, you can see we have a slideshow block and then nested inside it, there are three slides. Now obviously here we can see the interactive admin side of these blocks, right? So this is the overall slideshow and then, you know, this is one slide, this is the second slide, this is the third slide, and you can click in there and edit the text, large, medium, small, you can change the buttons, so on and so forth. But let's go look at the PHP server rendered side. So if you go into VS Code of this theme folder and dig into the Our Blocks folder, let's go down and let's look at slide.php. And let's also open up slideshow.php. So in slideshow, this is the HTML for the overall slideshow, right? Like any utility classes that JavaScript can hook onto. And then here I'm echoing the inner contents, right? So like this is the wrapper for the slideshow as a whole. And then this would contain its nested content. So in this case, the three slides or however many slides are inside of it. So then this is powered by, you know, slide.php. So then down here we have the actual HTML for a slide. So you could, you know, modify Tailwind classes or your own CSS classes. And then it's just going to echo the actual content, right? Like, so the headings, the buttons, so on and so forth. So I've set things up so that you just use a matching name. So for example, if this is slide.php, well, there's a file named slide.javascript, and this is the admin side JavaScript. So this is what's going to actually power this interactive layout on the admin side. Yes, we can use JavaScript there. I just don't want it to save static HTML. At the end of the day, I want to be in control, you know, one unified template where I control the public facing HTML. Cool. Now, how does this work? How does WordPress know to look for these matching file names of like slide PHP and slide JS or slideshow PHP and slideshow JS? Good question. Let me show you. So in functions.php, I have a class that I've named and I've called it JSX block. So I don't need to bore you with all this code in this class. It's essentially just going to load the correct JavaScript and PHP files. And then you just create new instances of JSX block and you give it a name. So like here, you know, slide or slideshow or generic button, generic heading, banner. So then I have in our, our blocks folder, those matching file names, those JavaScript and PHP files. In addition to my JSX block class, I also have something called a placeholder block class. And then as you might've guessed, you can create new instances of a placeholder block. Now, what in the world am I calling a placeholder block versus a JSX block? A placeholder block is when you don't need React or JSX on the admin side. So let me give you an example. Um, if we go to like just a typical page template, so templates and just click like single page, right? So here we see like header placeholder um, or footer placeholder. So the idea there is, let's take the footer for example, right? So the owner of this website, they don't need to actually like design the footer, but there might be a landing page. So there doesn't need to be anything like interactive. I mean, if you wanted to, you could create a JSX block for the footer, but a placeholder is when you don't need to actually process JX, JSX into regular JavaScript. You don't have anything complex or interactive going on. So you can literally just have a JS, a JavaScript block that says footer placeholder, and then your matching PHP file can actually output 
the HTML in its place. This does give us the power of composition though, right? So like if the client of the website wanted to create a landing page and they didn't want to have the footer, they just wouldn't include this block here. So they can, you know, reorder or remove or, you know, they're still in control. They're just not needing to make design decisions. Cool. And then I have one final class in my functions.php file. It's called public client side block. You would use this when you need interactive JSX on both the admin Gutenberg side and the public facing portion of your website. Let me give you an example of I've you can see I've created one new instance of this called quiz. So let me show you how you would set this up. Let's go create a new blog post really quick. So new blog post, I'll name it just, you know, example post. We have uh, two paragraphs of lorem ipsum and then in between those two paragraphs, let me add in my, uh, my quiz block type. So if you just search for quiz or are you paying attention, you can add that in there. So now let's add a question here of like, uh, what color is the sky on a clear and sunny day? And then give three answers, right? So like red, uh, blue, and purple. And then it's a little bit hard with this background color, but you would select the star for the correct answer. So like obviously blue is correct. If you don't want a gray background over here on the sidebar, you could give it like, you know, any color that you want. Cool, so let me go ahead and save this and then go view it on the front end of my website. So obviously this was using JSX, right? It was interactive. You could add new fields. You could mark which one is correct. But then also on the front end of our website, this needs to have JSX as well. It's interactive, right? So if you get it wrong on purpose, it's gonna say, sorry, try again. It waits a couple seconds. You can try to get it correct. Perfect. But the idea is that WordPress out of the box, if you just follow their basic tutorials, they don't have a prescribed way for you to add React or JSX on the public client facing portion of your website. You kind of have to get creative and set that up yourself. So in this boilerplate theme, I've set that up for us. So obviously it's that easy to, you know, create a blog post or a new page would be just like creating a blog post. However, I think the real power of compositions and this block based approach is what if you wanted to create like a landing page that didn't have maybe the global site wide footer down here. Let me give you an example and describe what I'm talking about. So if you go back into uh, appearance and then customize. So yes, obviously you can edit the templates, right? Like what the home page should look like, um, what an individual page should look like, what an individual blog post template should look like. However, you know, that's going to define uh, what that should look like for all 500 pages or for all 500 posts. What if you wanted a bespoke custom landing page? Let me show you what you can do. So we'll just go into pages and let's click add new and I'll name it like example page one over here uh, on the right hand sidebar under page you can click on template and then I've created a template for us called empty canvas. Here's why this is cool. So let's add a few blocks. So let's start by adding a header. If you search for header, I named it fictional university header, but that's just what I named it. And then maybe let's add a banner, right? So like if you search for banner, here it is, banner. Um, let's add inside the banner block, you can click this plus symbol. Let's add like a generic heading. These are all blocks that I created. So just say like a uh, cool landing page. Maybe make that medium sized text. And then if you click anywhere in the banner, you could add a button, right? And say like, wow, and make it dark orange. Make it medium, cool. And then maybe below this, let's imagine you wanted just like uh, headings and paragraphs and you wanted them to be centered. So if you search for a block type of container, you can see I have something called Brad's container. This will make sure you have good generic styling for H1 through H6, you know, paragraphs, lists. Uh, but then inside there, you could add a few paragraphs. And then imagine if you didn't want a footer at the bottom of this page. Like, yes, you wanted the header and a banner, but Maybe you don't want the global footer. Well, that's cool. You're building your own completely empty template sort of from scratch by reusing these site-wide blocks. So we just don't include the footer. Maybe instead at the bottom, we want a slideshow, right? So you can just add in a slideshow. Let's search for slideshow. Here it is, slideshow. Let's add like two slides. So this plus symbol to add the first slide, let's say like uh, generic heading, just like slide one. Uh, then click on the overall background image and then right on the right hand side you can click choose image let's go ahead and upload a photo really quick 
So I'll use uh, this textured background. Go ahead and select that. And then click on the overall slideshow and click the plus symbol. Let's add, you know, slide number two. So generic heading, uh, slide two. If you wanted to, you could click on the this uh, overlay area and click generic button. Say like, wow. Let's change the background. Uh, let me add a new background really quick. Maybe this one. Go ahead and click select. Let's go ahead and click publish. And then let's go view that page on the front end. And there you have it. So we have, you know, the typical header a banner area, a couple paragraphs, we have a slideshow. Oops, and I'm realizing, and you see we don't have a footer down here, but we probably don't want the slideshow to be nested in that container. So to fix that, right, we want the slideshow to be full width. So I like to use this icon uh, when I'm dealing with blocks. So yes, you can see that Brad's container is housing the slideshow, so just click on slideshow and drag it up and out of there. It might help to drag it like above like this and then you know drag this one to be above it cool let me go ahead and update that go view it on the front end beautiful so the idea though is that this isn't using like the same template that all pages or all blog posts are using this page has a completely empty canvas and through the power of blocks and composition you know you can add in the global header that perfectly uses all of your branding and your design your colors right this header was designed by a professional designer so on and so forth right so your client is sort of on rails it's a guided experience they can mix and match and decide what they want on their page but they're not having to make style choices or design choices it's all sort of guided for them and ultimately the markup the html the css the javascript is all still fully within the control of the developer not the WordPress system. I don't know about you, but that's how I prefer to build large, scalable websites for my clients. Now, before we bring this video to a close, I do want to admit that yes, you would never use this approach for a theme if you were gonna actually like ship this theme, um, like if you were gonna sell this theme to people or include it on the WordPress free theme directory, right? Because this theme is entirely way too dependent on its included block types. And in a perfect WordPress world, you're making your block types available as a standalone or independent plugin, right? There's not supposed to be this complete fusion between themes and block types, right? So if someone's building their own website in WordPress without the help of a web developer, you want them to be able to switch and choose different themes and you don't want their website to break just because they're not using the same theme any longer. Whereas with this theme, you know, it's entirely dependent on these block types that are registered within the theme. So if you switch away from this theme, none of this content is going to work or exist any longer. So obviously this, this approach is not for you if you're trying to ship actual WordPress products uh, to a marketplace, right? But if you're building websites for clients, like large content driven websites where your client needs to be able to edit the content, right? Long standing projects that are going to be around for a while then I think this approach is amazing. And this approach perfectly matches my workflow. So I thought it might help some of you out there as well. Anyways, that is going to bring this video to a close. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed my WordPress theme, you might enjoy my full premium WordPress course over on Udemy. I believe at this point it's over 40 hours long and it shares with you every single thing that I know personally about WordPress. So if you would wanna build something like this yourself or if you know this fictional university theme in the course, we build this together step by step. We don't write the CSS or the basic HTML, but we do make the theme come to life bit by bit. We learn about block development, plugin development, custom fields, custom relationships, metadata, React, and a lot more. So you'll find a link to this page in the description for this video. It has heavily discounted coupons to all eight of my Udemy courses. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope you feel like you learned something. And stay tuned for more web development tutorials. Take care.